Hello and welcome to my channel. In this video, I'll be using craft kit. Well, it would be number 46 if they were continuing with the numbering system, but this kit was called Vintage Pop-Up Sentiments. And when I saw the reveal for this um, box kit, I knew that I wanted to make a mini album with it. So I'm going to show how to make a modification on an accordion hinge mini album. But within this album, I'll also be using the pop-up mechanic that this die set was designed to create. So you'll see how to put that together as well. So I've just written down some numbers here. So my covers are going to be eight and a half by five and a half. And I might either use heavyweight chipboard or a couple layers of 120 pound cardstock. My pages are a full sheet of eight and a half by 11. I'm going to score that in half at five and a half. And then I've got some mats and layers below. So I'll um, remind you of those dimensions as we get to those pages. So I have um, this die here is what attracted me to this kit uh, first and I just really think it's a cool shape and it's um, designed to actually be the hinge piece for your card, for um, the front and the back of your card and it has this really um, narrow, I would say maybe an eighth of an inch, maybe a sixteenth of an inch gusset. And what I like to do whenever there are dies that put score lines in for you, I just like to take it to my scoreboard and reinforce those score lines so that they are deeper. Um, a lot of times dies, especially, you know, because they want to be cautious of actually cutting as opposed to just scoring, um, those score lines aren't super, super deep. And I don't run it through a second time to emboss or anything. So um, I just go ahead and, and score those lines myself on a scoreboard. So I've got two here, one that I folded exactly in half, so I ignored the score lines that the die put in, and then the other, the one on the right, I scored on the score, the proper score line, so it does have that little bit of a gusset. On the one that has the gusset, I did reinforce that hinge with some um, Tyvek. And if you've watched any of my other mini albums, you know that I like to use Tyvek to reinforce hinges, flaps, anything that's going to have movement or anything that um, might potentially tear over time. Tyvek is a material that is resistant to tearing. It's resistant to water as well. So it's a nice strong material that I like to use to reinforce things, especially when I know um, something is going to get kind of exercised or, or used a lot. So um, I'm going to combine that with some liquid adhesive uh, and the liquid adhesive and the dry adhesive that I ran earlier is a nice combination because the liquid adhesive will be nice and permanent, whereas the dry adhesive is a nice instant stick so that I can, um, it'll hold everything in place as I continue to work on the album. And that way I don't have to wait for everything to dry. Now, normally with an accordion hinge, instead of gluing your hinge pieces together like that, you would take one long strip of uh, paper and then fold it accordion style. And in fact, I'll link to a couple of videos where I learned about this style um, in the description box below if you want to check that out and see how it's generally done. I'm adapting it because I won't really want it to use this hinge piece. So I'm going to make my page base here. This is a full sheet of U.S. letter size, eight and a half by 11. Along the 11 inch side, I've scored it in half at five and a half inches. And what I'm going to do is, um, again, reinforce with Tyvek. This time I'm using, um, black, uh, a black Tyvek wristband. On the hinges, I have, well, I was aiming for craft color, but it's a little bit more, um, of a terracotta look. It's very reddish, but even though it will be, um, noticeable. I don't think it's um, too much off of the craft color. So what I'm going to do is put my um, page base back into my scoreboard and this time I'm actually going to be cutting. So I've lined up that left hand edge at uh, five and a half inches and I'm going to aim to to cut right over the score line that I put in. I'm going to cut from one and three quarters of an inch all the way down to six and three quarters of an inch. Essentially what I'm doing is making a five inch long slit right 
in the score line, right in the center of our page base. And because this is lined with Tyvek, um, my uh, trimmer didn't cut all the way through. So I used my uh, utility blade to just uh, finish that cut off. And um, so I'll go ahead and note that I'm writing this down for myself, but also so that you can clearly see <laughs> what I'm doing as well. So you want to cut from three, one and three quarters to six and three quarters. The die cut of a uh, piece of the hinge that comes in the kit, that is just shy of five inches. So I found that if you cut a five inch um, uh, tall slit, then it's um, not a lot of uh, wiggle room. So your hinge, your page won't be sliding up and down on that hinge, but there is just enough of extra space so that you can comfortably fit the hinge through this slit. And that is what's going to um, keep our pages inside our book. My Tyvek strips are white on one side and uh, colored, or in this case, black on the other side. And so that white does um, become visible. And so I'm just taking a marker and coloring right over that so that it's a little bit less noticeable because I'm working on black page base, it's, uh, the white really does pop if you, if you leave it. And of course, if you didn't want to use the Tyvek, um, you don't have to. I'm just worried. I want to take some extra precautions to make sure that that, that slit that we cut doesn't grow over time and, um, and eventually have this sort of not fit straight or, um, worse yet, fall out altogether. So, um, so I'm just making sure that my page can comfortably slide, um, into this hinge piece that we have and still be able to fold down or fold closed, uh, nice and flat, but also open up nice and flat. And if you're finding that your page is, um, kind of buckling or not sitting straight, you can just take extra little slits, um, like you saw me do earlier and, um, see how I had to add some extra, uh, Sharpie there. It's just because I extended that slit just a smidge and, um, in order for that hinge piece to fit comfortably, um, into this, uh, slot that we're creating. And so you just want to be gentle, even though it is reinforced with the Tyvek, um, you know, you still don't want to be too rough with this piece. And so we have a lot of re reinforcement going on. The hinge itself is reinforced with Tyvek. The page base is reinforced with Tyvek. So um, I think in terms of the longevity of this piece, it's it's going to hopefully last. And um, in particular, I'm making this album to house some photos that my husband's uncle sent to us. And it's from a um, trip that he took with my, uh, with his grandparents and uncle when he was younger. And so his uncle actually um, made copies of all of the photos, printed them on photo um, paper, and um, sent uh, a lot. I mean, it was a full album. And the uh, photos are really um, pretty cool looking. They're three and a half by five inches, I think, in dimension. And they already have that sort of yellowed <laughs> look to them because they are photos from his childhood. And so the uh, I've chosen a very vintagey paper pack from um, Die Cuts with a View for how to um, decorate my pages. And I'll link to that if you're if you're interested in it. But it's funny because I showed him just the the album so far just with the pattern paper inside and he's like, oh that's so cool looking. It's too bad we have to put photos over <laughs> over the papers and cover up all the paper. It is a really um, nice paper bag. Um, so here you see me putting some adhesive onto the hinge and the um there are different ways of securing this hinge into your album and I'll I'll do it one way and if you catch the videos that I link to um in the description of other tutorials you'll see other methods especially since I'm not doing the 
typical or standard accordion style hinge. So what I'm going to do is um, I just brought in an extra page and um, this is done a lot in a lot of methods and what you can do is um, take that hinge as an extra opportunity or as an opportunity to put in an extra page in your album. And so I've cut this extra page to eight and a half by five and three eighths. So this is one eighth of an inch more narrow than um, the page base that uh, we started with originally. And that's because it has to fit inside that folded page. And so that extra um, one eighth of an inch allows this to not um, to flip smoothly and not interfere with the hinge um, in the center. The uh, white sort of stacks that you see me putting under my page uh, my album. It's just a couple of six by six paper pads and that's because I've already, you know, started in on this album and it's, uh, it's fairly thick at this point. So I'm just looking to, um, level up, um, uh, my, uh, loose page that I'm adding here to the end so that I can fold everything down flat, burnish it, and, um, it just makes things a little bit easier to work with. So this hinge piece here is the second one that I die cut where I folded it exactly in half. So this one I did not follow uh, the score lines that the die puts in but instead I just folded it directly in half. And one of the reasons why I'm adding this extra hinge is because um, I can see my Tyvek through um, that slit on this side. So um, that's one reason. It's just to make it look a little bit cleaner and um, disguise that cut in the page a little bit better. And then the second reason is decorative, just to add some more of these, uh, this fun shape. And as you can see here, I'm putting liquid adhesive all the way to the curvy end and smoothing that out, but I'm not putting it, the liquid adhesive all the way to the folded edge. And that's because a little bit of the hinge on the other side is visible. So I just want to make sure that this doesn't get glued down to anything that's going to make it hard to open and close because I am stacking, um, you know, one crease line over top another crease line, which can be challenging to do, but possible. You just want to um, make sure that you're opening and closing it fully, fully open and fully flat and burnishing along the way so that you know this will fold flat and open flat and, um, and it should be um, not a problem. So I already have a few uh, pieces of pattern paper cut and what I'm going to show is how to mat your pages when you've got that decorative element um, sitting right in the center there. Now, you could just um, glue this down as you see it here and cover up that um, the hinge completely or not completely because a little bit of it will be visible if you plan to leave a nice border around um, your pattern paper. But the reason why I chose to make a mini album with this hinge is because I love that shape and I just think it, it just looks really cool. So I want to work that into the design of my book and, um, and my um, pages. And so what I'm going to do is tape down my pattern paper so that it has that nice black border on the other three edges. And then using the same hinge die, I'm going to line my die up with the other half that is exposed on the right hand side there and then tape it down to my pattern paper. I found it really useful to tape uh, the pattern paper down first so that you're not juggling with that moving around on you as you try to position your um, die. And so you can really just focus on getting the die in the right position once you've sort of, quote, locked down the pattern paper, at least temporarily. So I'm going to run that through my die cutting machine and um, you'll see here in a second that it's going to be a perfect fit and we'll have that nice black border all the way around. I find that it's um, easier 
Well, not maybe not easier, but I just think that for uh, for me, I think it's better to just do this page by page and make a custom um, die cut on every for every page because um, sometimes uh, I'm just making allowance for the fact that when I glue down this hinge, it might be a little bit different on every page. It might be. Uh, tilted in a certain way, maybe it's not exactly centered. So I don't want to just take my die to the pattern paper and just try to line it up um, midway or center it along my pattern paper and assume that that's going to be the perfect mat for my page. Rather, I just went every single page I did exactly as I showed you in the uh, earlier and custom cut that um, <clears throat> center hinge uh, piece from the pattern paper so I know that it's going to fit perfectly and it's going to have uh, that perfect border all the way around and that just leaves room for what I'm sure are imperfections in gluing down <laughs> the hinge so um, I definitely recommend doing it that way, um, because I, well, who knows, if you're really precise with how you place your hinge, maybe, maybe you can, um, just kind of take one pass and, and die cut all of your pattern paper by just centering, um, the die on your paper, but, um, I did not have confidence that, <laughs> that I placed my hinge perfectly every single time. So instead I chose to do it this way. And you can see once these fit in, it really works that, you know, hinge piece into, um, into the design of the page. And that's part of the reason why I chose craft paper because I knew I would be working with a, um, more vintagey design and, um, and it does work with all of, all of the papers. So that's, um, one of the really awesome things about this style of, um, binding or hinge is that if you leave the back and front, um, kind of open and you don't put your covers on there, you can continue to just extend this one hinge at a time as, um, as much as you need. And it's a fantastic style of binding for having a ton of pages because as you saw, we had, um, the folded page that right there, if you count front and back, that's four pages or for uh, photo opportunities. Plus I added that one additional page to the center, um, uh, attached to the hinge. So that's another two. So for every hinge that you add to your mini album, you can get six pages worth of photos and, um, for not a lot of thickness either. And that's if you don't plan to put a lot of embellishments and things like that on your, um, pages. Um, okay. So here is the, um, how you would create that pop-up mechanism that this whole die set is um, designed for. <laughs> so I've got the mechanism here and one piece is cut plain and then the second piece that I just showed is cut with the slots. And this piece is the little um, banner that you can slot into or fit into the slots on the mechanism. And the die does come with a couple of dies um, to cut out the uh, front of your card and the back of your card if if you were creating this as a card. I'm actually creating it as a little maybe like a little interactive unit that I'm gonna glue right into my album. So as I mentioned before I like to just reinforce the score lines and I use the cutting line of my scoreboard because it's easier for me to line up the top and the bottom of um, the score line that the die puts in. I just can't bring myself to draw a line on my scoreboard, but I know a lot of people do. Um, and that is another way to kind of, uh, line up your, your, uh, uh, die cut as well. Okay. So now on the mechanism piece, there are a couple of glue tabs and, um, and some wings. So the glue tabs you want to mountain fold down and the wings you want to valley fold up. So, um, I'll set that aside and just create the uh, card, what would be the card front and back. So there are instructions that do come with the die set. And I'm showing you uh, another type of glue 
um, alternative that you could use, especially if your pattern paper is thin. This pattern paper is pretty thick, the one from um, Die Cuts with a View, so I, I don't think it's necessary, but the Kalal all-purpose glue is great because it is a silicone um, based glue. It's solvent based, I mean, not silicone based. Um, and that means that it won't absorb into your paper like a PVA or a water-based glue would. So that means it won't wrinkle your paper. And if you've ever worked with thinner pattern papers, you'll know that um, sometimes your glue can wrinkle it or you can see the actual glue lines if especially if you don't smear it like i'm doing here so the kalal all-purpose glue is a really nice alternative to pva glue okay so i just glued two pieces of um, the card front so that we get a nice finish finished edge on the outside and on the inside for the what would be normally be the card back i'm only using one layer because again i'm actually going to glue this into my book. So as I glue these down, I'm gluing them right to, but not crossing the score line. So it is going to leave that little bit of a gusset in the center, which I know can be hard to see because I'm using black on black, <laughs> but um, there is a little bit of um, a gusset in the middle there. This is um, the two mechanism pieces and we do need to glue these together. So in the center, you'll find these two little, um, they're about half an inch by a quarter of an inch glue tabs and you could use maybe a strong dry, double-sided dry adhesive tape, but I'm using liquid glue. I do want it to still go fully to the edge. So I'm using, I'm just smearing it with my finger all the way to the edge. So it's a nice thin layer of glue, but it gets, uh, covers the entire glue tab. And of course, whatever glue that you use, just be sure to give it a really good burnish. On the wings, we also have um, glue tabs as well. So you just want to do the same thing. Um, if you're using a dry adhesive, I would still recommend getting it as close to all the edges as possible. Um, and then you can just fit these two halves together and they'll just meet up the cut edge with the folded edge of the other half. And this piece is not meant to be able to fold down completely flat um, and open, but you can still lay it down and burnish it, which I highly recommend doing just to make sure that your adhesive has a nice firm stick. And here is how you fold that all the way down and um, and flat. And I like to give it a good burnish in that position as well. The die set also comes with a die that will cut out um, some matte layers for um, the inside of your card. And you can see those little angled um, slots that is um, perfectly positioned so that your pattern paper can wrap around the mechanism. And I'm just using the um, top piece, I centered that so that there's a nice black border. And I just drew with a pencil right where the slots are. And that way I know how to or where to position my mechanism. So go ahead and again, use some liquid glue here. I did use some um, score tape, dry it, double sided adhesive as well. And that's so that I have a nice permanent stick because I want to test this mechanism without having to wait for the uh, wet adhesive to dry. And I did not push um, the folded edge of my mechanism uh, all the way to the center of that gusset. And, um, and I recommend that if you um, want to have your card or this unit open completely flat that you try to push that um, the score line of your mechanism as far into the center of that gusset as possible so that when it's folded it or when it's open it will open um, as much as possible. Um, this opens uh, probably like 95 90 percent of the way but it, it won't fold uh, open completely flat. So that's a personal choice, just whatever whatever you prefer. If this was a card, you may prefer it to open um, completely flat. But I'm gonna go ahead and add uh, some magnets that will be hidden by the pattern paper. And I haven't yet decided if, if I want to um, use the pattern paper just yet, so you won't see me glue that down. But 
because I thought that what might be actually kind of neat is to use this as a journaling spot. And so I might um, have a blank piece of paper here where um, my husband can kind of write in some details about the trip, where it was, the year, and stuff like that. And where the sentiment pop-up is, we could give a title to the book or the album, um, or maybe put the year or the location. Just something to add some extra context to the photos because they're all coming from this particular vacation trip that he took with his grandparents. And the other idea that I had was to possibly use that die that cuts out the matte layer uh, for the inside of the card. And instead of cutting it out of pattern paper, to actually cut a photo. And so when you open this up, you see a photo. Um, and so I haven't yet decided. What I'll do is when I finish this album completely, I'll go ahead and shoot a showcase video so that you can see how it turned out. But here's a rough flip through of the um, album as it is now. And I'm going to leave the... Um, the back and the front uh, hinge pieces open so that I can continue to add pages and make sure that I have enough pages to fit all of the photos that we received. And then when I'm ready, I can go ahead and attach the back and front covers. So this is what the spine looks like. And you can see it's a fairly um, compressed spine and yet you can fit so many photos and the whole album lays really really flat and um which I really love because then you can really you know see everything and um and have it be nice and open so that is my project uh first project with the tonic studios craft kit number 46 vintage pop-up sentiments if you like this video please consider liking commenting and sharing and if you want to see how I ended up finishing this album um, go ahead and check out the showcase video when I have that posted thank you so much and until my next video happy crafting and have a fantastic day bye